news moves fast and numbers are our language at Statista. Hi, I'm Gina and let me take you through the numbers behind the headlines of March 2023. TikTok, the social media platform with hundreds of millions of users worldwide, is never far from the news. Concerns around security, its addictive nature and the mental health effects of beautifying filters have all seen TikTok draw sharp criticism. These are some of the reasons why lawmakers in the United States are attempting to ban TikTok in the country. Momentum behind the ban built after TikTok CEO Xiao Zichu appeared before a US House committee to face five hours of questioning about national security and other concerns. The Chinese-owned brand is immensely valuable and is the largest part of the ByteDance lineup, TikTok's Chinese parent company. But how much would a US ban impact TikTok? Well, quite a bit. According to Xiao Zichu, the US is home to more than 150 million TikTokers and they make up 25% of overall views. In 2022, 7 in 10 18 and 19 year olds and nearly 6 in 10 of 20 to 29 year olds in the United States engaged with TikTok, meaning the platform could lose a large part of its user base overnight. On the creator side, the impact could be immense. As of March 2023, 6 of the world's 10 biggest TikTokers were from the United States. The advertising industry could also suffer a major blow considering the importance of digital advertising to reach young users on the platform. When Huawei faced restrictions in the United States, the effect on their lineup was severe. The company was consistently among the top three smartphone vendors in the United States. Not long after restrictions hit, the company's global market share sharply declined. Though the algorithm is very similar to those of other social media platforms, TikTok has been more successful in catching the attention of its users. In 2022, Americans spent more time on average using TikTok than other social media apps. Currently, only India and Afghanistan have banned TikTok entirely, although several others, including the United States, have already prohibited the use of the app on government devices. Based on the Indian experience, a potential ban of TikTok in the US could benefit social media platforms like Instagram or YouTube, which also feature similar vertical short video formats. March was a rocky month in finance with two major collapses and the hasty acquisition of Credit Suisse. On the 8th of March, Silicon Valley Bank announced they had sold off around $21 billion worth of securities early, resulting in an after-tax loss of $1.8 billion. To cover up the gap, the bank sold common stock and depository shares, spooking investors and clients alike. The share price tumbled and a digital-led bank run began, with clients withdrawing $42 billion in a single day. By the 10th of March, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. With assets of $210 billion, the 16th largest bank in the United States became the largest failure since the 2008 financial crisis. But the problems didn't end there. Elsewhere, signature bank customers began withdrawing their money en masse as just like Silicon Valley Bank, the majority of balances were above insurance limits. The New York DFS took possession of Signature Bank on March 12th, making it the second largest collapse since Washington Mutual Bank in 2008. Fast forward just two days and the Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse announced they discovered material weaknesses in internal controls, pushing back their annual report. A day later and the chairperson of the bank's largest shareholder, Saudi National Bank, ruled out further investments for regulatory and statutory reasons. These factors, combined with industry uncertainty, led to clients withdrawing $35 billion in just three days and stock prices plummeted. Ultimately, rival institution UBS agreed to buy Credit Suisse for approximately $3.2 billion in a deal brokered by the Swiss government. The term too big to fail triggers 2008 flashbacks, but the Swiss government's intervention came about 
as the full Credit Suisse collapse could be catastrophic. Credit Suisse is one of the 30 so-called global systemically important banks, the banks for which their failure could trigger a wider financial collapse. Protests and riots broke out across France in March against a planned increase to the minimum pension age from 62 to 64. Under the French system, there are two pension ages. You can pay into the system for 41 years and retire at 62 or work until you're 67, at which point a full pension is paid regardless. Under the new rules, workers will have to pay into the system for at least 43 years, retiring at 64 years of age. Currently, France enjoys a relatively young age of retirement compared to similar nations around the world. On average, the French retire between the 62nd and 63rd birthdays, and women retire between five months and one year later than men. Not surprisingly, support for the move is highest among those who are already above the minimum pension age. Raising the age of retirement is clearly a poison chalice for any French politician. Former President Nicolas Sarkozy faced a similar public reaction when his government raised the age in 2010. And the Macron government also faced protests when proposing the increase in 2019. So, why would any leader risk political annihilation to press forward with such an unpopular policy? In France, the number of pensioners is increasing faster than the number of people paying into the system. As such, the government fears a pension deficit and claims that without reforms, the entire system is in danger. The government's own Pensions Advisory Council revealed the system produced surpluses in 2021 and 2022, but predicted average deficits could reach 10 to 12 billion euros per year over the next 25 years. While union leader Laurent Berger has called on the president to enter discussions and put reforms on hold, the government has committed to enacting the new laws. To find out more about these topics and countless more, head to statista.com and join us next time for another round of Month in Data.